Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson, and I'm here with my friend Mary Glaska, who I have interviewed many times before for her books. This week, we're going to in, we're going to discuss the book, The House of Gold, which is uh, to a great extent about Mary. Um, Mary, would you like to open us with prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we will be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. We ask that the Holy Spirit may come upon Cynthia, Cynthia and I during this next hour, that the Holy Spirit may come upon all those who are drawn to listen to this interview. And we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit upon all those who encounter this book that I've written on Our Lady, that we may be inspired to know her better, to fall more deeply in love with her, and most importantly, to imitate her, um, especially in her humility and her littleness and her purity and her love. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus, to the Father in heaven, amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Um, so I'm look at, looking at you a little bit um, cockeyed here because there's something wrong with the screen. Is it with me? Uh, or here with we go. You? Here we go. Okay. Now you look okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. <laughs> I just look like me. <laughs> no, for a while you didn't. <laughs> you were kind of like blurry oh. or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, so now we're all set. Um, so, um, Mary, how many books have you written now? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven, and they're all and, great. I, I am hey. your biggest fan. Aw, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and the artwork and every one of them. I mean, even just the artwork is worth the books. You know, they're Aww. beautiful and you do I a wonderful job. I wish we could job. have it in color throughout, but it's so yeah. expensive with so no. many pages. I know, I know. Yeah. But anyway, I love your work. Thank and, you. Uh, and it's it's great work. And I'm I'm really proud of you because it's, Aww, I know that's you. not easy work. And no. I think <laughs> it's not easy work. And I, I imagine, you know, that there's all kinds of um, negative spirituality. Oh, there is. To interfere. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and you just keep with it. I mean, I'm really proud of you for that. You just focus on what works and keep yep. going forward. You know, I yeah, just try to yeah. ignore any problems that come up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Good. Good. So, so um, tell us about this book. What led this you to, book. to write so, it? House of Gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. I ordered a copy quick to have it for mm-hmm. the interview to show people. Mm-hmm. But um, the title House of Gold comes from one of Our Lady's titles, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she is that House of Gold. And I kind of mm-hmm. go into that in the introduction. Mm-hmm. But um, I wanted, I, well, it was more the Holy Spirit kind of showed me that I needed mm-hmm. to write a book of consecration mm-hmm. to the Maria Bambina, to the mm-hmm. infant heart Mm -hmm. of our lady, her immaculate and sorrowful heart. And, you know, Mm -hmm. my whole life that I have done, um, you know, St. Louis to Montfort and Maximilian Colby's consecrations to our lady. I renew them Mm -hmm. every week. Um, And yet there's a particular grace when you approach our lady as the Maria Bambina, as the infant Mm -hmm. Mary, it's Mm -hmm. it's an aspect of her life. A lot of people don't know about or think about or pay attention Mm -hmm. to. And there's Mm -hmm. so many graces because her immaculate heart was formed in her conception, you know, from the Mm -hmm. very beginning. Um, And I was really drawn, I've always been drawn to her under the titles of Star of the Sea and Mystic Mm -hmm. Rose. So I Mm -hmm. wanted to really include all of that and Mm -hmm. kind of do a consecration to her, not at all to replace the beautiful consecrations that we have, but to kind of add Mm -hmm. a different aspect to that, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe there are people too, like me who have done that their whole life and they're looking to go even deeper. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this book is. At the end, I do have a consecration prayer, Mm -hmm. but um, as opposed to being like, 
mathematical, you know, you have to pray this, this, and this for this many days, and then yeah. you say this prayer, and voila, something happens, you know. <laughs> um, I want to build that relationship because mm -hmm. that's what's most important between Our Lady and the soul, right? Yeah. And um, so I have this set up in chapters that someone could just take and read. And then at the end, I, you know, have a possible schedule for 33 days, if like the tradition is, if people mm -hmm. want to prepare that, but mm -hmm. they could take and spend a year on this book and just mm -hmm. kind of read, you know, what moves them. And um, it will innately make them grow in their understanding of and love of Our Lady um, as mm -hmm. from her infancy, right, as a child, but then under these other particular um, titles. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting when I kind of decided to do this and I, I did, had no idea how every time I sat down to write, I was overwhelmed with the majesty of her, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, yeah. I am so overwhelmed. I don't even know how, like, I don't know how to go about this. And mm -hmm. God started to just kind of give me um, so much material. And then it was more just kind of organizing what he had given to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was amazing because the first thing that I came across, well, I had a lot of material on the Maria Bambina just because I have a devotion to her. And um, when I first went to Texas to live as a hermit in 1999 is when I first heard about that devotion. And um, it comes from Milan. And then there's a special shrine there to her. Mm. And then also there's a huge devotion in Mexico. There was an apparition of our Maria Bambina and being so close to Mexico there, some of that had kind of come up into Texas and this priest had been aware of that. So I was introduced to her, you know, many years ago, but it was interesting because um, that was in 1999. And then several years later, my grandma died. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I were going through her things and lo and behold, she had a whole packet of information from Milan on the Maria Bambina. Oh. And oh. she had this, like the picture of her that mm -hmm. is it's very well known at the shrine where John Paul II had visited when he was a post. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom said, do you want, are you interested in this? And she gave it to me and I was like, that's the Maria Bambina, you know, and I actually have a personal devotion to her. So um, that was kind of me. And I've gone back to her often over the years, just because by thinking about that infancy of Our Lady, um, you grow in your own imitation of it, right? And that especially what captures me is her innocence and her humility. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so profound from the very beginning, you know, that the word purity doesn't even capture it, but that's it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like it's yeah. just like a pure reflection of the divine. That's that mm -hmm. heart of our lady. Um, and uh, so it was just, I had that material. And then um, several months ago, I was on Amazon actually doing something mm -hmm. and it popped up as a suggestion, this book on our lady by St. Ildefonsus. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Crown of Mary, I think it's called. And it captured me because my little brother um, took him, St. Ildefonsus, as his confirmation saint years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a, co a competition between my brothers who could get the funniest name as, you know, we had like all sorts of funny name saints that they chose and St. Ildefonsus. Well, um, he actually, so I ordered the book and I was like, I'm going to show him some really cool writing. But as I started to read it, I thought this has to be part of my book. Mm -hmm. And he writes beautiful things on the mystic rose and on star of the sea um, and on our lady as a star and as the sun. Mm -hmm. And it's so rich. I never would have found this if the Holy Spirit wasn't mm -hmm. guiding. Well, so I kept the book. <laughs> I showed no, my brother, but. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no coincidences there. Not at That's all. That's not a coincidence. That's no. divine intervention. <laughs> and then it was interesting because I had a friend who went to go visit, um, Cardinal John Newman's mm -hmm. shrine out East and said she yep. had it on her heart to really pray for me in my writing. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I came across his book, Mystic Rose, 
which mm. went through all the titles of Our Lady. Wow. And it was so rich. I included great excerpts in here from him mm -hmm. on her as the Tower of Ivory, as the House of Gold, um, as the Star of the Sea, the Mystic Rose. I'm trying to think of which ones. They all were beautiful, but I started to mm -hmm. kind of gather that. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, you know, some of the research on the saints with particular titles I came across. And then I, um, I ordered an, an old book. It's way out of print. That was all the original writing of Maximilian Colby. Mm. And um, I found it on one of those like used books places, yeah. but I wanted it because I wanted, I have books that take his excerpts, but I wanted to see the collection oh, they yes. had. So I went through that and was able to include some of it. Um, and then St. Louis de Montfort, of course, and all of his different things. It's so, you know, incredible. And so it all started to kind of come together. Um, mm -hmm. And I was able to pull chapters together. Um, and then within that, kind of set it up. So each chapter includes... Um, you know, the writings of the saints and kind of the history of that title and where it came from, which is just, mm -hmm. um, you know, helpful when you're meditating on something. And then I take a section um, and have more like personal prayerful meditations from Our Lady on that title. So it's mm -hmm. more like, you know, she's explaining something. Oh, and then man. I go through um, some of the titles from the Litany of Loretto but then St. John Eudes also wrote a beautiful litany to the Maria Bambina. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are similar because it's like, you know, the infant house of gold or the infant, mm -hmm. you know, seed of wisdom. But then some of them are unique. And our Lord just kind of showed me how to divide up the litany of Loretto and the, the litany of the infant Mary mm -hmm. and to grab them. And so at the end, I go through some of that, that, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, pray for us, pray for us. And then I have the, the meditation of our lady. So it's really beautiful the way the chapters unfolded because, you know, there's like information, there's the writings of the saints, then there's kind of that time of little prayer and then um, like a mm -hmm. prayerful meditation. And mm -hmm. some of the chapters I included prayers at the end, you know, particularly to the star of the sea or, you mm -hmm. know, to the seed of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the very last chapter, I put all the prayers kind of together again, because I think it's helpful for people. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're well, they're welcome to pray them as they prepare. But I tend to be less formulatic with the way I help people than others. You know, I think the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's going to grab somebody and then they can pray that every day, you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and kind of see where where it goes. Yeah. Um, because I think the Holy Spirit works differently with all souls. Some people like oh, the sure. litanies and some people like, you know, something different. Mm -hmm. um, but so that's kind of like the history of where it came from. And, and it was really beautiful. I was able to include some of the songs I've written, mm -hmm. but just they matched in the verses. And so I included some of those, mm -hmm. you know, at the very beginning, that first song, Maria Bambina. Mm -hmm. I, um, it came to me, I started to pray about writing a song on the infant Mary and it kind of mm -hmm. came to me as a flash. I wish you could have a song in a book, you know, like I wish that they could hear it, but they'll have to mm -hmm. look it up. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's so beautiful and there's such a depth to it. And there's a few of my other songs that I was able to include too, just the lyrics, um, kind of as a meditative, um, section and then like the icons you know I'm always reminded of St. Anthony Maria Claret who said that we should preach the gospel in every medium you know and so mm -hmm. I've got the book but I and we have the you know interviews we have podcasts but then I have music I have art I have that and I like to include it together because it all shows something different mm -hmm. and so I was sure to include some of my icons like you mentioned yep. at each of the mm -hmm. chapters um, and I was I was working on painting a new one and mm -hmm. um one of sebastian's friends who is part of like the international commission of navy chaplains contacted mm -hmm. me and asked if he could commission an icon to our lady star of the sea and i already had on my heart to be doing that so mm -hmm. i was able to kind of you know do and he had a couple other ideas so mm -hmm. i was able to do that and then he can mm -hmm. use them in his book i was able to add them here oh, so is this Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's a friend of mine so, too. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. yeah in so fact, he's, 
we talked about that painting because he, yeah, he was, I had interviewed him on his book and right. he said, Oh, wait until you see the two pictures that I'm going to include. I think he said two. And yeah. I said, Oh, I said, where'd you get them? And he said, Oh, this artist, Mary Klosker. It's like, Oh, I know her. <laughs> We're, we travel in a small circle here. We do travel in a small circle. Oh. He's just, he was so patient. I said, I'll be out of town oh. for the month of April. and mm -hmm. But it all mm -hmm. came together because I, I finished this book. Then I finished the icons that we could include. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I was able to kind of present it all to the Lord. And I'll tell you, this is kind of a funny anecdote. The Lord kind of surprised me because here I'm working on this book, House of Gold, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the meantime, on the Feast of St. Joseph, here I've been kind of looking to get out of the apartment and have a place to kind of have this ministry centered from. Mm -hmm. And this house was presented to me and it's yellow brick. So it looks like a house of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on a feast to St. Joseph. So I was like, I wrote a book for Our Lady and she gave me a house of gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's so it's wonderful. Just funny how the Holy Spirit, oh, you yeah. know, the, everything kind of comes together at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just incredible. It is. But I can kind of share with you each of these different chapters if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. So the first one, I just take you back through a history of the devotion to the Maria Bambina. And um, I actually took it from the book I published on Children of the Cross because I had the same thing, the history of this. But I think people yeah. need to know that to understand. Yes. And um, not only the history within the church and how important this devotion has been at different times, mm -hmm. um, but within the writings of the saints, there's mm -hmm. so many writings of the mystics on her childhood mm -hmm. and Bridget of Sweden, especially has so much writing. I, I include a very long excerpt from St. Bridget because um, it's just way more beautiful than I can summarize, you know, when you oh, take yeah. that authentic writing but then the different apparitions of the infant mary over the years and then the saints who had devotions to her you know padre mm -hmm. pio had a, a statue of hers in his private chapel and mm -hmm. um it was also interesting because it was about seven or eight months ago i really wanted a statue of the infant mary and you can't really mm -hmm. find them anywhere but i eventually mm -hmm. found one from like a rare random place in milan Mm -hmm. that was able to send me one. So that's the picture I actually have on the back is a picture of my statue. Mm -hmm. And it was really incredible. Oh, mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. And um, beautiful. there was only like one available on eBay or something. <laughs> but um, it was just beautiful because that all kind of came together, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but to, I want to bring the world's attention to Our Lady in her childhood, because like I said, you know, the virtues of children are things that are despised in our modern day world, right? Yeah. And our lady never left those virtues that most children have, you know, mm -hmm. because she was immaculate. She never sinned. Her heart never changed. That heart that was perfect and immaculate and sensitive and docile and trusting mm -hmm. and obedient and all of that was the same heart pierced with that sword under the cross. Mm -hmm. She had nothing to numb that pain, you mm -hmm. know? Like we have our hearts that are made callous from sin and, you know, we yeah. kind of become immune to things. She didn't yeah. because her heart, just like Christ's sacred heart is an infant heart. And then the heart on the cross is that same divine heart. So is our ladies. Her heart in the Immaculate Conception is the same just mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, she, she yeah. grows exponentially, but it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to draw people's attention to that because mm -hmm. um, there's a great purity and holiness that just radiates particularly from looking at her, you know, as an infant, as mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that gaze of her little eyes, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so I talk about the devotion in Milan and, um, and 
there was like a statue that had a miracle that happened with it and it was passed from convent to convent, but it ended up in a, there's a big basilica there, the, a beautiful church and a pilgrimage site. And John Paul II as a Pope went there and um, prayed a beautiful prayer that I included in here and said that he hoped and prayed that the world would come to know more and more the mysteries of the infant Mary. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time in Mexico, there was a sister who had an apparition of the infant Mary and her superior kind of poo-pooed it. But our lady asked her to, um, you know, have a statue, like a wax image made and um, to spread devotion. And eventually her superior came around. And so mm -hmm. simultaneously in the world, this devotion was being spread, but it wasn't the time of like the internet or anything. So they didn't know about sure. it, you know? Sure. And then there was a time, there was a place, I think it was in Malta, where um, a statue of the infant Mary was washed up on the shores and the, the mm -hmm. you know, the captain of the ship that found it just dedicated it to the nearest village and a great mm -hmm. um, devotion has built up among those people. And I kind of go through the different places of the world where this devotion has come, you know, mm -hmm. and um, how they celebrate it. And I think that's important just to know, because there is a great mm -hmm. history in the church. This isn't something right. new in the mm -hmm. least, right? Right, right. So, you know, before I start anything, I wanted to kind of go through that devotion, that history. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go, the second chapter is who is the Maria Bambina? Who is the infant Mary? And I kind of focus more than on some of the writing of the saints. And I, I explain, you know, that purity and that, um, just all of that virtue that never changed. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I just, I want people to see and experience it. You almost can't put it mm -hmm. into words, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I include a lot of the writing of Louis de Montfort there. And um, there was another um, really holy priest that spread devotion to Our Lady. His name here, let me see if I can find um, his name here. And he talks about, he was Polish. I don't see it right here. But he talks about... Um, our lady and her different virtues, the same way that Lewis de Montfort takes you through all the virtues of our lady. And so I include some excerpts from him as well, because it just, mm -hmm. you know, it's sometimes you talk about like our lady is holy, but like, how is she holy? When you talk right. about these principal virtues, yes. those are concrete things that we can incarnate in our life, you mm -hmm. know? So what does it mean to be faithful? Mm -hmm. you know, and for her faithfulness and what was the price of that faithfulness? And then how are we called to imitate that? You know? Right. And I talk about how, you know, she even told St. Faustina to imitate her, but primarily in her humility, in that littleness, in that hiddenness. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also take you through her name. There's all mm -hmm. the different meanings to the name of Mary and they all have a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of, I, I take the reader kind of through that so that he understands that name she was given as an infant had an eternal meaning that can mm -hmm. still give light to us, right? Mm -hmm. Mary, it means, you know, like star and it can mean, um, you know, sea and it can mean um, like hidden. There's something about her being hidden. It can mean bitterness which she took all bitterness to herself and made it sweet mm -hmm. through the cross right there's one translation that means beloved there's another that means rebelliousness but she took and crushed the rebelliousness of satan through her obedience you know like so she was like a right. converter mm -hmm. <coughs> i just thought it was really beautiful it um, is. and then the next chapter is our lady as the mystic rose and I love mm -hmm. that title. Um, what does it mean to be called that rose? Because a rose has thorns. And people mm -hmm. think of Our Lady, like her immaculate heart has the roses. But there are thorns piercing her heart, right? It didn't mm -hmm. come without a price. Right. And, um, and I, I share John Henry Newman's take on her name as the mystic rose. And some of the other saints who wrote about that title, St. Ildefonsus, right? Mm -hmm. And her being that, you know, the rose was like the queen of all flowers and her having every virtue was the queen of all of that, but it didn't come without pain. And then I talk about her as also the desert rose mm -hmm. because she lived in that desert and she gave forth life. And if you study mm -hmm. what a desert rose is, it perfectly reflects 
our lady, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, come up like a champagne rose with, you know, you have to be very careful with the way you nurture it and stuff. You know, a yeah. desert rose is like neglected in the desert and it takes years to build this huge trunk. It's a tree. It's like a 20 foot high tree and it's indestructible, right? And it, after this foundation, then it bears great fruit. And you think about like that huge foundation of Our Lady's humility mm -hmm. and it grew all of her virtue. She wasn't babied by God. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. she had to, it, it was a furnace. You know, she had a difficult life. People don't realize how difficult it was. Sure. And yet she grew strong and mm -hmm. she's indestructible because of her pure love. And so I talk about all of that, you know, and St. Ildefonso says, I have a beautiful long excerpt from him. Um, and so the, another quote here from St. Bridget, um, she says, the rose gives a fragrant odor. It's beautiful to the sight and tender to the touch. And yet it grows among thorns and it, um, against all beauty and tenderness. So many also are those who are mild, patient, beautiful, and virtue to be put to a test among adversaries. And as the thorn, on the other hand, guards, so do wicked surroundings protect the just against sin by demonstrating to them the destructiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. The virgin may suitably be called a blooming rose, just as a gentle rose is placed among thorns. So this gentle virgin was surrounded by sorrow. So it's always like a mystery. Her immaculate love, her perfection, all of that is the way of the cross. The same mm -hmm. way that Christ, you know, said everyone needs to pick up their cross and follow me. And it's something that it didn't just like show up at the end of her life. She lived that. And I'm sure she lived it in her childhood, you know, that she, she people forget how human she was. And she, um, she was one that was not foreign to the idea of sacrifice, which mm -hmm. is why she was able to say fiat, you know, mm -hmm. even when it included sacrifice, you know, yeah. Joseph didn't even know what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I talk about that. And then also just the rosary um, and how it kind of comes from her title that way and how we're called to pray. Um, so that's that chapter. <laughs> and then we go on to who is the morning star and the star of the sea. And there's so much in there um, that Navy chaplains would love <laughs> because um, it's it, the title comes from mariners and, and the men that were away at sea yeah. and um, the sorrows that they, you know, they would have and that their mothers would have when they were lost at sea and they would mm -hmm. just turn to our lady and mm -hmm. the, the most beautiful thing that I found on our lady star of the sea, there's lots of, of beauty in this mm -hmm. chapter, but it was St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And I do, I go through the history and all of that, but St. Bernard of Clairvaux wrote so much that was so beautiful on this title. I included some of it multiple times because he just talks about Our Lady as that star of the sea. And I'll share just this little um, excerpt here. Whoever you are that perceives yourself during this mortal existence to be drifting in treacherous waters at the mercy of the wind and the wave, then walking on firm ground, turn not away your eyes from the splendor of this guiding star. Unless you wish to be submerged by the storm, look at the star and call upon Mary. With her for a guide, you will not go astray. While invoking her, you'll never lose heart. If she walks before you, you'll never grow weary. If she shows you favor, you will reach your goal. It was just so beautiful. Um, and it, yeah. I mean, it is just a whole lot from her, you know, in following her, you will not go astray by praying to her. You will not despair. If you cling to her, you will not go wrong with her support. You will not fail under her protection. You have no fear under her guidance. You do not grow weary. Um, it's just his writing as he goes on and on and on. So <laughs> the book is worth just Bernard of Clairvaux's excerpts in this because <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if nothing else, turn to that chapter and read it because it's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the next chapter is who is the Immaculate Mother, our seed of wisdom and our lady of fiat. 
And I talk about that mystery of her immaculate heart. And I, St. Maximilian Colby, you know, loved the Immaculata and wrote extensively on her. So there's a lot of his writing in there. Um, But, you know, it was because of her immaculate heart that she was that seed of wisdom. She was so Mm -hmm. empty of herself that she magnified the Lord and she Mm -hmm. allowed his wisdom and the Holy Spirit to possess her and to go out from her. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's incredible. So that's why, I mean, she's the seed of wisdom too, because baby Jesus, who is wisdom, sits on her lap, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so she's yes. like that throne, but her heart is also a seed of wisdom, you know, and um, there's so much to that. And it's because of her wisdom that she said fiat to God's plan, but it's also because mm-hmm. of her fiat that she can be called that seed of wisdom. You know, it's all mm-hmm. interchangeable. Sure. And the foundation of that is her immaculate, um, her immaculate heart, her immaculate mm-hmm. love, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's so beautiful. And then I also talk, see, John Henry Newman discussed um, about or her title mirror of justice and how it's because she is immaculate and the seed of wisdom that she's that mirror of God's justice and God's justice is not like, you know, like a mean school teacher, (laughs) you know, it's that which keeps order in the world. And it's what Mm -hmm. makes our lady beautiful is she reflects that justice of God because Mm -hmm. she is the, the, he puts mirror of justice with mother, most amiable. So it's mm-hmm. just not a combination you would normally hear, but it's so beautiful to see that right. connection. Um, and I also go through the parts of scripture that speak about wisdom that reflect our lady. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, in the book of wisdom, there's so much that talks about the wisdom of God, but it could be interchangeable with just speaking about our lady because she was so full of the wisdom of God, she almost made it incarnate, right? Mm-hmm. Inner was a spirit that's intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, agile, clear, unstained, certain, never harmful, loving the good. I mean, it goes on and on and on there in Wisdom 7. Mm-hmm. All of that could be said of Our Lady, even mm-hmm. though it was speaking of wisdom. So I right. kind of shared that. And how not only was she a seed of wisdom, um, but she was that mother of God right. and her motherhood. I kind of lead then into the next chapel chapter about how her motherhood uh, was, you know, full of that immaculate purity. So she's the mm-hmm. virgin mother, but also that mother of sorrows. Mm-hmm. You know, I think when you put those two titles of, of immaculate and sorrowful heart of our lady together, it's only then you see the profundity of her holiness because Mm -hmm. it's her purity that makes her so capable of suffering and it's her suffering that continues to to expand her heart in purity Mm -hmm. it's always perfectly Mm -hmm. pure but it gets bigger and bigger right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so um there's a lot of scripture there and then um I include at the end of that chapter, St. Louis de Montfort's prayer to Mary. It's not his consecration. He wrote the most beautiful prayer to her um, asking, you know, let your humility take the place of my pride, you know, your, you know, this virtue take the place of what's wrong in me. It's so beautiful. Um, And it's, it's got to bear fruit for people even to just pray it once, right? Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> and then chapter six is who is the sorrowful co-redemptrix? That's probably the longest chapter. And um, I talk about Our Lady as that helpmate of the eternal high priest. You know, it's, it's Jesus was her son, but then she also was like his helpmate as that new Eve, Mm -hmm. But to be the helpmate of the eternal high priest, who is priest, victim, and altar, you know, means that she also suffered with him. Mm -hmm. And I go back to the writing of so many saints that use that title, co-redemptrix, and explain kind of what that means, to Mm -hmm. suffer with the one that you love. Um, And I talk about, too, there's a mystic saint, um, well, he's probably a saint, but Pope Benedict, <laughs> the sixteenth, mm-hmm. he um, he referred to a, my- a mystic named Bertha Petit in his um, document on spiritual maternity that mm-hmm. he wrote when he was a pope. 
And um, I had come across her writing when I was at Notre Dame. Father Ed O'Connor told me about her and told me that I should look up her writing. And she had a devotion and many revelations about Our Lady as um, the sorrowful mother, her sorrowful heart. And it's mm-hmm. interesting because during the World Wars, she was told to have her country consecrated to the sorrowful heart and when she did like the war stopped from there and there's so many beautiful things mm-hmm. to see where um promises were fulfilled because she you know followed these requests of our lady she's not well known but she is well revered right mm-hmm. and then i have very powerful um reflections on the tears of our lady Mm -hmm. And they're written more in first person of Jesus describing his mother's tears and then our lady describing her tears Mm -hmm. and the power of them. Um, And that's a section that you could just take paragraph by paragraph and spend days reflecting on. Right. Mm -hmm. And how, you know, the tears of our lady are very connected to the Eucharistic mystery because the Eucharistic mystery is that, blood and body and blood of Christ Mm -hmm. on Calvary, Mm -hmm. but his blood mixed with her tears under the cross. And so Mm -hmm. she is profoundly present at the Mm -hmm. mass. That Eucharistic mystery is a mystery tied to her sorrowing heart. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really beautiful. There's, it goes on and on and on. There's just Mm -hmm. a lot of reflections on that. Um, But Say then at the end, this is just a beautiful. Uh, then I have some quotes from the saints on it. But Saint Albert the Great said, "We're under great ob- obligation to Jesus for His passion endured for our love, but so also are we under a great obligation to Mary for the martyrdom which she voluntarily suffered for our salvation and the death of her son." Um. So we have an obligation to meditate on that sorrowful heart. Some people say, well, I don't like, you know, thinking about sad things, but what makes her so beautiful and makes like Mm -hmm. that immaculate heart shine is the fact that it was in that fiery furnace of sorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that, that very naturally leads to chapter seven, which is who is our queen. Our lady is the queen of our hearts and the queen queen of peace why is she our queen because she's immaculate because Mm -hmm. she sorrowed and because of that she is the mother of the church she's the queen because Mm -hmm. she is so pure and holy and she suffered so well to give birth to us and Mm -hmm. so i talk about the queenship of mary and the history Mm -hmm. of that feast and john paul ii's writings on that and pope Pius's writings on it he wrote a whole like encyclical on her as the queen and um, just include a lot of different saints writings on that so that, you know, people take time to meditate on her as our queen. And then kind of when you go back to the, the book is on the Maria Bambina. She's our little queen, you know, yeah. she's our infant queen. Mm-hmm. And you put all of these mysteries together and it does sort of form like a star because each one of these mysteries is kind of like a light that goes out from mm-hmm. her, you know? And so yeah. like naturally she is a star because you've mm-hmm. got, you know, the, the point of her as being immaculate and being sorrowful, being that rose, being the seed of wisdom. And when you take it all together and you gaze mm-hmm. at it, it's a star, but it's a star that doesn't lead us to focus on her. It's a mm-hmm. star that leads us to focus on God. That light coming forth is a divine light. Right, right. It's just so incredible. Mm-hmm. And so then at the end, I have a very long consecration prayer. Mm-hmm. But I figured if someone spent the time praying through this book, they want a prayer that includes everything. Okay. Right? <laughs> and then I have at the end, some preparatory prayers and extra prayers with those themes that mm-hmm. people might not be familiar with um that would just i i mean i think prayers to the maria bambina and prayers to you know, the ave maria stella and mm-hmm. um the different litanies and things and then the preparation schedule just if someone wants to follow something a little more organized right yeah, yeah. um but you could definitely take this book and like my dad said, well, I'm definitely going to read it. I said, well, if you start now, you can finish by September 8th. <laughs> and he laughed and he goes, oh, I'll get it done before then. 
<laughs> and then he can, you know, like God will arrange all of that. So the yeah, timing yeah. is perfect. Um, but you put it all together. You know, I, I had the title as the Maria Bambina. The, I couldn't decide like all that subtitle. And then mm-hmm. our lady gave me that house of gold. I'm just the house of gold. And it kind of, you know, yep. it takes it all together. So. It does. So that's the book. This is, it's kind of like a dedication of my life to Our Lady. I have always wanted to imitate her. I remember in kindergarten, I think I wrote that in the beginning here. They asked me to write an essay. It was only like three sentences long, but it said on who your hero is, right? And I wrote, my hero is Mary. I want to be like her. You know, she is my mother or something. And so here as a child, I wanted to be like Mary. And now as an adult, I want to be like the child, the infant Mary. You know, there's a particular grace on meditating on all of these titles and all of these aspects, but in light of her um, as a child, you know, because before Mm -hmm. God, she's still like naked in innocence, like, Mm -hmm. that. you know, even if she's crowned in glory. So Mm -hmm. anyway. That's my book. <laughs> wow. That's, that sounds like a real masterpiece. I feel like it is. I'm like, now I can die, Lord. <laughs> I wrote my life's work right here for you. I can't do uh, anything for Our Lady. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll, I bet, uh, I'll bet something else will come along. <laughs> I'm sure. I have a couple other ideas. but uh, see, like, I know. Oh, but th- I don't think anything will compare to what is here and it's not me it's really just well, I know who she is and mm-hmm. it, you know and to have these the insights of the saints and the church and have them all mm-hmm. together in one place it's just beautiful it's it's really beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is well it sounds like uh you continue doing exactly what god wants you to and that's I what hope. we should all be doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying yeah. my darndest <laughs> well yeah it's i always you know you can tell it by the fruit too i mean okay. you're one of the happiest people i've ever met oh you're so I, sweet you you really you you just have joy and it's um, this. i mean to be honest is, it is when yeah. you talk when you talk about the things you've written about or you know right. it's like your face glows I mean, not like really, like. Right. I mean, you. (laughs) I work in the sun a lot. It's just the sun. (laughs) No, but no, but you can tell the happiness, and I really do believe that um, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, that shows, and in you it does show. Oh, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope. I hope I can give the world joy. It's why I love doing so much work with the persecuted Mm -hmm. Christians. Mm-hmm. Because they don't have that. Yeah. And they've said to me before, it's worth risking my life yeah. to do this. Because mm-hmm. you get meaning to that, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you give a, a, an explanation to what's going on. And there's a comfort mm-hmm. that comes mm-hmm. through having this with us, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So we can, I, I ask our listeners, pray mm-hmm. for donors. You know, I started this foundation now to be able to um, mm-hmm. fund and have it be tax exempt, you know, but to mm-hmm. be able to fund the distri- printing and distribution of this all over. And we've done, you know, the Middle East, we've done North Africa, I've started Central America. Wow. And um, we're just waiting for the rest of the funds to keep going, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what's what's the exact joy, What's the exact name of that so people will the know? The Fiat Foundation. Okay. The Fiat Foundation. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, you're, please help us. So right now we're, we did uh, um, some books in Mexico, about a thousand books in Mexico. And then I have people in Colombia, the women suffering from the drug cartels and all of that. Mm-hmm. I have a priest down there, a few hundred dollars short to do the first book. Then we want to continue there. I've got a contact in Brazil wanting to translate them into Portuguese and get them in Brazil. And then Pakistan, we're out of books. The slaughter wow. in Nigeria this weekend, uh-huh. I would love to send them at least out of the darkness to, you know, to comfort mm-hmm. them in that. Yeah. Um, there's so much thirst 
but like, I'm just one person, you know? So if there's anybody listening who has it on their heart to help a hundred percent of it goes towards the printing and distribution. I take care of everything else. Like there's no, you know, other costs. I just like Mm -hmm. it a hundred percent goes towards printing and distribution. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be able to do this. My translator in Pakistan's already working on it. And, Mm. um, and it'll be Wonderful. a beautiful gift there. We have so many children that we're working with there. Um, the prayer groups are incredible. Mm-hmm. And um, the Middle East is changing, but it's in the children. So, like, what a gift to offer them the infant Mary, you know. Yeah. Oh. So, or to get this into Mexico where that devotion came from, you know. Like, <laughs> how yes. beautiful. that Because yes. they don't know about it, and it's theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of being a missionary is just giving people what it's not giving them something I have. It's giving them what's theirs that they don't mm-hmm. even know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's yeah. the house of gold. <laughs> Good work, Mary. Thank Good work. You. Thank Keep you. it up. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to close us in a prayer? Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, blessed mother, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for being the house of gold. We thank you for saying yes. We thank you for not only saying yes to being the mother of Christ, the mother of the redeemer, but to be the mother of the redeemed, to be our mother. And you won that title under the cross as our sorrowful mother. And we thank you for that. We ask that none of those graces that you have won for us go wasted but that you pour them all out abundantly on us and give us the grace to receive them. And we ask that you draw many, many souls to encounter your love in this book, House of Gold, that you make it available, that you make it possible. And we ask all of this to the Father in heaven with Jesus, but through your intercession as we pray, Hail Mary. Full of grace, oh, grace, the Lord is with thee. With thee. Blessed, blessed art thou, thou among women, and, women. and blessed, and blessed is, is the fruit of thy womb, thy womb Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, of, Mother God. of God, pray for, pray us, for us sinners, now, now and at, and the, at hour the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you again for thank another you, excellent interview and um, keep up the good work. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always a joy talking to you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you take care. God bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.